So I'm always keeping an eye out for broken or weird UI that I don't like in apps and websites that I use because I think it makes a good video topic for me to show how I might change it. Now I came across one recently on the CodePen website and I went down a big rabbit hole where instead of just doing a mock-up or a prototype, I actually injected my own code into their website to change their UI so that it actually works the way I envisioned it. And I did this using a user script. So at the end of the video, I'll explain what a user script is, how you can run my user script or create your own user scripts. But first I'm gonna show you this UI change that I wanted to make. So if you don't know CodePen, it's a really cool website where you can write HTML, CSS, and JavaScript into these three boxes and immediately see the result on the right. It's great for like testing out ideas or learning things, and you can share these really easily. So it's a great site. The thing I don't like is it's kind of trivial, but it bugs me, this change view button. So when you click it, it pops up a menu and you can choose from three different view types with the editors on the left, the top, or the right. I don't like that it pops up into a menu because the menu just includes three buttons that take up just about like only a little bit more space than the button that I clicked to pop up this pop-up. So why not just have those three buttons up there in the header? And anytime you have a pop-up, you have to worry about is the behavior of this pop-up going to work well? You know, is it accessible? How do I dismiss it? Can I hit escape to dismiss it? Is clicking anywhere dismiss it? What if it pops up off the side of the page? Is it going to get, you know, pushed back over? There's all kinds of things. You're probably going to miss something. So it's better to just not even have a pop-up. Also, the button says change view, but the pop-up says editor layout. So two different labels. I mean, I don't think you even need two labels. And if you have two, it's kind of like arbitrarily different labels there. So I wanted to fix this. And instead of doing a mock-up, I wrote a user script, which allows me to inject my own JavaScript into their site and reconfigure their UI. So it, <laughs> it took me like a day to, to write this. I felt kind of silly. I kept thinking, why am I, bot why am I spending so much time just to fix this little UI thing that's so small. But here's what I came up with. My script takes the menu, finds those three buttons, pulls the icons out, then deletes the menu entirely, takes the button that says change view, duplicates it three times, removes the text label off of each of those, puts the appropriate icon into each one, adds, I add my own click handler to each button, and then change some of the styles of the buttons so that they all get smushed together and they look like a, like a single unit with three buttons in it. And then clicking one of those, I have some code that can determine the current editor layout and then set a new editor layout. So clicking the button sets the new layout. And so now it's just one click to each of these. And uh, I like this a lot better. I can just instantly access the one I want, no menu to deal with. I think it's great. I like using it this way. I think if we're considering though, what's the best UI, there is a downside to this one, which is that it removes the text labels. So before, if you're looking for where do I change the view, and you see a label that says change view, obviously you click there. But here, you may, you may be looking around for that. You might click settings. You might not realize what these icons mean until you've already used them. So especially for a new user, it might not be as friendly to not have those text labels. So I just went with the icons. But then I also modified my script to have a different way for this to work. And this one keeps the text label, but takes the, the icon and puts the icon of the current view into this button. And then I modified what this button does when you click it so that instead of popping up that menu, it cycles through the different layout options. And this is a kind of a cool way to do it, I think, because now it's just one click. You still have the text label. The icon represents the current state. And it's kind of fun to click through it because you see it change and you can click through it really fast if you want. And so this is another way to do it that maintains the text label. It's pretty easy. The downside, obviously, is that it could take up to two clicks to get to the view that you want. And it may take one or two, so you never you never quite know unless you have the, the order that it's gonna go in kind of memorized. If you go past the one you want, you have to loop back around. So it takes just a little bit more thought to make sure you land on the view that you want. But I think it also works pretty good. And I prefer both of these to the original CodePen one. So I'm curious if anybody watching this has an idea about which one they prefer or a better UI for this entirely. The cool thing about this is I was able to modify their existing UI without adding a lot of custom stuff to it. So even if you kind of invoke their responsive design and you get a different layout, everything still works here, which is pretty nice. So what are these user scripts that I'm using to inject code into this website? Well, this concept of user scripts has been around for a while and it was popularized by some extensions for like Chrome and Firefox called um, 
Grease Monkey, and then there's one called Tamper Monkey. And there's these, there are these extensions that will run these scripts and people kind of share different scripts that modify different websites in different ways. I was happy to find user scripts extension for Safari uh, so that I, cause I like to use Safari. So I want this to work in my primary browser and it's really nice. It has this built-in code editor that looks really nice. And so I'll put a link to this um, Safari extension in the description of the video. I, I don't like to use this built-in code editor. I want to use my own code editor and I want to use TypeScript and I want to have a whole build system and be able to use NPM modules and everything. So I set up a template that allows me to do that using ES build. And every time I save the file, it places the built script in the location that this extension looks for them. So I can just refresh the page and see the result right away. Now, if you want to make your own user scripts, I'm making my, that template available to help get you started. There's a link to that on my GitHub also in the description. And if you're as bugged by the code pen button as I am, uh, there's also a link in the description to my user script that modifies this button. So you can try it out if you want. And it should work even if you're using Chrome, as long as you're using a user script extension like Tamper Monkey, or there's one called Violent Monkey. I don't know where they come up with these names, but you can try it.